distinguished colleagues here, you can see the topic of my presentation. The organizers asked me to be short, and since the time is running out, I'm not going to talk a lot about epidemiology. That's quite a rare pathology, but it's really aggressive and malignant. It's really, uh, it's why it's common uh, pathology starts with the regional lesion with the distant uh, histology that influences prognosis but does not affect treatment protocols that much. The higher the grade, the worse the prognosis and the survival rate drops drastically with that. So early identification is the priority and it should be treated with surgical interventions, chemo or RT. Unfortunately, there are only conventional treatment methods and many patients when removed, when the uh, original tumor was removed uh, should uh, take uh, secondary therapy, usually chemotherapy, and we have recurrences quite often in almost 50% of cases, and we raise the question, what should be done with those 50% of cases that was not our job exclusively, but we contributed to that. So I just think a couple of words uh, on my own. We have been hang having the so-called targeted therapy. That's the new field of treatment. And the role of nuclear medicine in prognosis and planning will be exemplified in my presentations. There are so-called phthalate uh, receptors that are actively expressed with ovarian cancer. Here we go. That's the new field of treatment, and they are expressed 50% of all ovarian cancer cases. I guess everybody knows what a phthalate res receptor is. So you can read about that in Wikipedia. We have a kind of molecular targeted uh, medications uh, the, they, of course, intervene with the uh, RNI, but they're not that poisonous as the conventional medications. Immune gastonomy is the first uh, treatment of the first choice, but the effect of uh, this treatment can be completely different. So after a number of chemos and surgery, we have to treat completely different disease, so we have to re-estimate the data we get from the primary block. That is why we need the methods of VIVA diagnostics of that disease that we plan to treat. Initial diagnostic studies and the application of therapeutic preparation we used uh, single proton scanning, CT scanning, using the preparation of technetium EC20. The preparation which selectively is accumulated in folate receptors of the tumor 
and we try to assess the extent of correlation of scanning results with a response to the following therapy with therapeutic agent. We initially examined 22 patients with this diagnosis, irrespective of the nature of absorption uptake. There was diffuse or focal. There was different classification, plus and minus, uh, where there was accumulation or no accumulation after the end of this uh, therapy using EC-145, a therapeutic agent. The scores were given after the end uh, of the study retrospective analysis allowed to distribute all patients into three groups when 100 percent of previously detected uh, uh, lesions accumulated ec uh, 20 the diagnostic agent from one to 90, uh, 29 percent, that is not 100 percent, and when uh, sometimes never accumulated anything. And based on RISIS criteria, the overall response in the cohort of patient and uh, was compared um, within these three groups. All in all, we assessed 152 lesions in these 22 patients. In the group with most accumulation, uh, they had the high probability of response versus those who didn't accumulate. With resist analysis of some patients, the increase of activity accounted for more than 50 percent in the first group, which was EC2 pluses, uh, 38 and 34, respectively. In the subgroup of patients receiving less intensive treatment, of course, patients were treated not only with EC1845, they also received other preparations such as uh, noxorubicin and other uh, preparations. Control over disease was exercised only in the group that expressed a maximum amount of folate receptors, 80 uh, percent of cases out of 50 intermediate and inefficient when uh, it was not accumulated. And the uh, overall survival for subgroup with maximum accumulation versus the group with intermediate and uh, the one with no accumulation. Uh, so it was, um, there was statistically uh, well, true data. So if diagnostic preparation accumulated in folate receptors has a higher prognosis for survival. Another point. According to the analysis of, con of control over mobility, uh, the overall efficacious response, the subgroup of EC20++ was 14%, which is the highest figure, versus two other groups where this indicator was around zero. And of course, it's important how biochemical suspicion uh, on recurrence uh, for continued growth is important. Here you see that high quality marker for ovarian cancer, CA125, with the increase of its level, with the elevation of its level, we can suspect the presence of relapse, metastasis. Uh, this data is shown on the diagram that was on the previous slide. We, uh, we conducted ex uh, examination of the patient with tordioxyglucose with low level of C125. There is practically no accumulation, and there is dissemination and enlargement and involvement uh, uh, of the activity of the lesions. And, uh, Examination with diagnostic agent EC20, you see that uh, dissemination along the abdominal part 
you see that on the slices. One more example, the same patient uh, with ovarian cancer. After surgery and chemotherapy, we see uh, the lymph nodes in peritoneal area. And another case here, besides accumulation in abdominal part, uh, there is supraclavian lymph node, uh, quite an effective diagnosis, and the results show that the use of such targeted uh, uh, agents on folate receptors uh, determine uh, identify patients with this pathology uh, which can be efficaciously treated by targeted therapy. As for the prohibitions similar to EC145, um, uh, so there is data that there are some analogs. So what else I would like to say? Why did I ask to include this presentation to our session? Considering uh, technetium, we can d expect that RAINI 188 will also be applied, and we can cause that double impact, and we can exercise targeted radiation.